Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and I've gotten a lot of requests to talk a little bit about real estate photography and how it's being affected by the uh, COVID-19 health crisis, the pandemic that's going on, what that means for real estate, what it means for us real estate photographers. A lot of people have been losing their jobs, a lot of people have been dying from this pandemic. It's a very serious thing. Uh, it's been very uh, dis disturbing to actually watch the humor uh, on social media about this because this is a very serious issue. But out of everything bad that's ever happened, every downturn that's ever happened, even when we had the bubonic plague hundreds of years ago, um, there was always something that came out of it. So no matter what happened, the world didn't end. We didn't go into a dystopian type of movie. Mad Max didn't take over the world in Thunderdome or anything like that. So there always is light at the end of the tunnel, and in this case, there is. So I wanna give you some updates on what's going on uh, with the real estate state in the market, what you can do to start preparing, what you can do right now also with the work that you could be getting, what trends are starting to come out of this, and what this also means with the market and how that then will reflect into your potential work that you can get and what that means for business opportunities or business loss. So I want to cover a lot of stuff here and I've got a lot of notes here so excuse me for a distraction as I look down from time to time so that I can cover everything that I've made these notes on. So the first thing to remember is that there are short-term and there are long-term consequences out of something like this. I'm old enough to remember things like uh, Black Monday when the stock market crashed. Uh, there was a great opportunity to, uh, a couple years later to uh, buy real estate um, in the short term before then. It was a great uh, opportunity to invest in the market. That's how I ended up buying my first uh, piece of real estate, which was uh, back in that time, uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s uh, during that time. There was also the, the dot-com boom, obviously the big recession or about 2008. Before that, there were other down markets in around uh, the late 90s that also were affected by different things. And so out of every single one of those, there was an opportunity. And for me personally, it was an opportunity to buy real estate. So um, that actually worked out very well for me. Um, it's also an opportunity where businesses come out of this. For instance, uh, Al Gore is a great example, The Inconvenient Truth. After he brought the awareness to it, green industries started sprouting up everywhere. There was always a new opportunity. So when the dot-com bubble burst, a new uh, type of market started emerging and other things happened within the tech industry. So think of all the things that will happen out of this. And I'm going to get to some of that here shortly. You have to remember that even though the uh, coronavirus and what's going to happen with the SARS virus, and yeah, vaccine and medications and treatment, all that down the road over the short term and possibly the long term, there will be a longer term perception of how serious germ transmission can be. And so with that then, the potential home sellers may be very wary about having other people in their home. And this becomes then opportunity for real estate photography. I wanna emphasize very much that this is not a way of exploiting a bad situation. It's a matter of facing the reality of these things. And that's how when you're in business of any type that you can then be liquid fluid and be able to move with those times, but do so safely. So fear is good, but it can also drive opportunity and also your own life's decision. So let's talk real quick though about health, wealth, and risk issues and what this means if you're going to be taking on work right now. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of uh, the, my followers that have been overseas, uh, some down in South America, especially many over in Europe and some also in Asia. And some of these places have been hit really hard. Some haven't been hit as hard yet, but especially uh, some of my friends in, in England, uh, followers, and some of the people that do the training with me online have emphasized so much how serious uh, some of this has become and how restrictive it has become for them to do any work. So laws do vary by country. They also vary by state, county, and city level. For instance, in the state of California here, a couple weeks ago, uh, Governor Newsom did define that real estate photography services were an essential business. That then got convoluted in some counties like Ventura County where in California, where they didn't explicitly say that, so they clarified that here on, for instance, an April 9th uh, update addendum to their stay-at-home order. So you have to be aware of 
of what's legal in your area if you can go out and work. Some of that may be tea leaves, but another way to find out if it's legal is to also talk with your own clients that want to hire you and get something in writing from their broker, making sure that you are an essential service that they take responsibility for. So that's one way to cover your butt if you want to. But whether there's a legal issue, there's also a health risk involved here. So do you feel comfortable going out during this time to shoot properties? So some of the businesses opportunities that are coming out are expanding some of the standard shoots and i'm going to get to what you could shoot and um, what you could then do to be safer but overall no matter what here are some basic guidelines one wear a mask no matter where you're going and that doesn't include just going out to a real estate photography gig even if you're going to the store right now you should be wearing some type of face covering um, whether it's to protect yourself or to protect others you need to be able to be aware of that Doing that also encourages everyone that you work with to make sure that they wear a face covering. So even though the face covering yourself that you might wear won't protect you from uh, the COVID-19 possibly getting in, if you encourage everybody else and make sure that they wear, if anybody else shows up to a shoot anywhere where you are, they have to have their faces covered, but more so, you should be wearing booties, of course, and that's without uh, even being in the uh, in this pandemic uh, for a lot of reasons. You don't want to be tracking stuff through people's houses and then take it home with you. But the, the thing on, on gloves, people are saying, well, aren't you wearing gloves? And it's like, all I'm going to be doing is touching your surfaces, doorknobs, and putting it on my camera. My hands are going to do the same thing. So I, I'd rather have the safety of myself grabbing things and also my gear by just not wearing gloves. But sanitizing often, don't touch your face and use soap and water as often as possible. Also, shooting vacant properties has been ideal right now. So uh, there's a reason why a lot of properties that are vacant are coming on the market right now, and I'll get to that when I get to the market portion here. But if properties are not vacant, here are some guidelines. One, I'm enforcing that all occupants must be out at least one hour before I arrive. They have to have all the lights turned on throughout the entire property and all windows must be open during that time. So there's an hour for all the air to kind of circulate in there. Once again, I'm wearing a mask when I go in there, so that's a double layer of protection. But the house must be clean. If I don't smell bleach, if I don't smell cleaner when I go in there, and I'm in doubt, then you need to talk to your person who just hired you from your car, you step out of that house, and tell I don't believe this place has been clean. When in doubt, just stay out, reschedule. This is life and death situation and they need to be reminded of that. And I think everybody right now is taking it pretty serious. If not, move along to some real clients that will. So once again, though, nobody can be on the property while I'm there. I sanitize my hands afterwards. I have hand sanitizer in the car. I know that this is very hard to come by. You can make your own, but if you search, not just through Amazon, you're not going to find it, but searching on the web, there are places that are making it that never made it before. And it's really just alcohol and some type of gel. So um, there are a lot of places that are reliable. Don't get gouged. There are places where you could buy a gallon for like 50 bucks. That's not so bad. And you can fill up things. Also, I sanitize my gear bags. Uh, once I'm home and unloading them, I recommend that you do as well. And all this takes a lot of time. Uh, and once again, there's not as many shoots. They're mostly just vacant properties uh, that are there and no one's on site. I'm there by myself. But there's a reason why those vacant properties are coming on the market. So let's talk a little bit about the market impacts and what's happening with real estate, real estate photography. So uh, one of the questions is coming out, who in the heck is selling a property? Who in the heck is buying a property right now? So believe it or not, there's not as many people buying, you'd be surprised, but there's a lot more people selling. There's people that have been poised to sell for a long time. They might've been nearing retirement or in retirement. They're talking about downsizing. They go, oh, you know, we'll sell. We're gonna wait for the market to keep going up. Well, those are the downsizers they are gonna be making Maybe the snowbirds that are going to retire go down to the south uh, from the northern states uh, and now they're finding that hey maybe I need to sell now let me get out of the market now my 401k my IRAs all those things are starting to drop like rocks I don't want my house to do the same thing sell 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 panic selling. So that's what happens a lot with then people that are in a position to say that, hey, I bought this house 20 years ago for $100,000. Now I can sell it for a million. Well, if I take a $100,000 loss, no big deal. So you'll find a lot of those um, that are on there. So also trusts after death, same thing. So trusts will sometimes hold onto a property. The family will that's been in a trust. 
it's been left to them after their father and mother died. And uh, so the same thing, they've been waiting for an investment time to when to sell. Well, now's the market time to sell. So it's vacant, they don't care, they can take a loss. Let's just go ahead and sell the property. Job relocations, people are losing their jobs across the nation. Some people then are also moving. And there's just job relocations that happened all the time anyways, pandemic or not. And some of these have been in the works for a long time. And so people have to put their houses on the market and they can afford to because a lot of times the relocation companies, the companies hiring them, will then cover some of those costs and losses. So another thing that will happen is because of some of the people that are in a position to be able to sell now, that will start raising the inventory and that's going to have an impact on the market and then how that's going to affect real estate photography in the coming months. So this is my prediction from that is that inventory will increase. In other words, more houses will come up for sale. Buyers then will be very edgy, uh, especially if they start seeing prices dropping, they'll want to see how low they can go. Same thing Thing happened in 2009 after the prices started to drop there were more people panic selling fewer people panic buying because they were like oh I'll wait a little longer and I could save fifty thousand dollars on this house and it did happen so uh, as that inventory increases demand uh, decreases then housing prices fall and it requires more marketing material and you might be seeing that right now where you're getting more requests for added services because you got to be top-notch and right now people also have to be remote we'll cover a little bit more on that in just a second. But basically, whenever we have in real estate photography supply outdoing demand, it's a boon for services like real estate photography and other marketing companies because you need more marketing material. And so realtors will come to you. And once again, I want to emphasize this isn't a way of exploiting a bad situation. This is just the reality of what happens in these markets. So be prepared for a flood of work basically in the coming weeks and months. I predict that you will probably see quite a bit. Now it may not be the number of shoots that you get, but the type of shoots that you get, the number of services. For instance, lately I haven't had nearly as many shoots as I would this time of year, but when I do go on a shoot, even just for a simple condo, they have me shooting uh, 360 uh, tours and they want extended 360 tours to show laundry rooms, bathrooms, everything imaginable, and walkthrough videos that aren't just your 60 seconds and teaser trailers, but they want five minutes or more. They don't care about it. So a few things to think about is that the slideshow tours, like through Tour Buzz, I hate that anyways, you probably know that, that the, these slideshow tours are gonna be a thing of the past because they're not really virtual. People want the virtual experience. Matterport used to have a bad name and it was really dying off. They've picked up somewhat because they've been uh, using the, the allowing the use of the, uh, the Ricoh uh, Theta Z1. You don't have to have Matterport to get a Ricoh, uh, Ricoh Theta Z1. I'll have some more uh, tutorials and information on things like that. But basically these 360 cameras are now uh, uh, becoming more popular. They're very hard to get right now. Some of the uh, cheaper ones are like the, the Insta360 uh, One X, which isn't really a pro camera and it has some shortcomings. Once again, I'll have more information on this over the coming weeks. But no matter what you do with 360, you can start right now offering more walkthrough videos. Get yourself a Ronin S. It's very simple to use. Um, and then the thing right now that you do with the walkthrough videos it's not just hey some fancy stuff we're moving real fast to a room and we're doing some whip pans and all this fancy cinematic stuff they want a virtual experience of you just slowly walking through from room to room through a property that's easy to do and also 180 or 360 degree pans while you just sit in place doing this so you can see a virtual experience so that's something you can do right now too and put that in your offerings also top-notch photography will continue to be paramount because they have to compete. These realtors have to compete in a very hard market and also real estate photographers have been coming out of the woodwork and it has disgusted me to a large degree to hear from my clients the gouging prices that are coming from some of my competitors in this area and down in Los Angeles also the whole territory that I cover where people are saying that oh I'm gonna give you a 50% off this walkthrough video and it's like already twice as much as what I would normally charge. So in other words, they're saying they would charge four times as much. It's ridiculous. They, they know that they've got some of these realtors behind the eight ball. Don't do that. Don't price gouge your clients right now. You will get a reputation that when this is over, that you were then taking advantage of a bad situation and you were the one exploiting it. Right now, we're all in this together. Make sure
sure that you convey that to your clients. Cut your prices on your walkthrough videos. Offer more uh, time on those. Also 360 tours. Be able to offer these things to help them out. And once again, the top-notch photography. Make sure that it's paramount. This will give you the reputation that will last a lifetime. Uh, so now, basically ending this whole thing is that in short, now is not the time to sit around watching Netflix, eating Easter candy, and just enjoying yourself with some time off, or sitting around stressing about what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life, the rest of your year. If you're serious about real estate photography, if you love what you do and you want to continue doing it, now's the time to sharpen your skills. A new opportunity is emerging out of this. Every time there's been a downfall, there's been a rise. And no matter what that is, it's not always the same thing, but it's usually something different. Once the meteor came and destroyed the dinosaurs, mammals took over. So you have to be flexible, know what's coming, be prepared for the market, so start practicing now every day. Shut off the television, break out the camera, break out the lights, and get to work and be prepared for the next flood of things coming your way. I hope all of you are staying safe. I hope all of your families are staying, staying safe through this pandemic. I wish you all the best. If you do, by the way, if this is the first time you've ever watched one of my videos, you wanna see more, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Until next time, please take care of yourself, take care of everyone around you, be safe.